This is one of the pieces I had stashed away for future use. I already started to uh, work on the edge, so I'm just going to continue with this one. I must have worked on that edge uh, like two or three months ago. This is one of my favorite types of material, this tan chert from Central Texas. They've got some of this stuff out here in West Texas, but uh, uh, it's hard to find. I can't find any close by. So I believe this is from the Llano River. It's a crack right there, so I gotta be careful. It's a really nice color variation in here. I'm going to try to preserve as much of that as I can on the finished point. Very common curve on these flakes. I'm debating whether or not to uh, remove that part or that part. See, if I remove this part here, the uh, coloration will be more evenly spread across the bottom of the base. If I take that part off, that coloration is going to be slanted. So. I can get a longer point from here, but I think I'm going to uh, preserve this half here. That way I can get that color variation across more of the bottom. Could also just take some of this tip off here. I might just do that. Normally I don't plan on this, this sort of thing. But I'm trying to preserve the uh, coloration here, so let me, let me just check. If I put the point, let's say, not here, but further to the right. That's like one and five eighths. This, if I keep it on this edge, it'll be like one and three quarters. Um, let's see, almost one and seven eighths. Well, yeah, I'm only going to lose about an eighth of an inch if I do that. If I just round the, the edge here, take a little bit off the length, that way the base will be very even.
I don't do this on larger points because it breaks up the uh, the abrader. But on these smaller ones, it doesn't matter too much. Still got to come in a little bit more so that that base will be straighter. And keeping in mind that I want to straighten out the whole thing from the side. So take a, I'm going to take advantage now that I have mass here to run flakes to flatten this piece. I'm not worried about things like this because I can get that from the other side. If it was stopping closer to the edge, yeah, I, I wouldn't want that, but it's it's near the middle so you can, uh, or I can send flakes easily to clear that off from the other side. Yeah, now that's a goof. Anyway. Turn the edge. Yeah, usually I'm not nearly this careful in the beginning. I want to make sure I get this point just right. There is a little bit of a difference in consistency or hardness between the two different colors in there. Probably the same down here. The lighter material is more difficult to nap on this one. I'm going to try to keep some of that cortex too. I've got to watch how I thin the base. As you can see, 
Uh, the flakes like to dive on this material, so it was diving in here and in here. So if I start thinning from the base, I'll probably get more diving flakes. Like this one here do dove in and it was very shallow, so uh, that's not a good sign as far as the properties of the material. So that's just my thought process right now. I need to uh, flatten it a little bit better before I start uh, cleaning up these cosmetic errors. I can do that at the same time. I can flatten and clean up these errors. So that's what I'll do. Still not, um, still not the shape that I wanted. I'm still gonna have to move the tip a little bit to the right here, but I'll wait till later. I, you know, I'll wait because I like to have a lot of mass around the edges at this stage, just so I'll have enough material to run flakes. So I'm flattening and removing step fractures at the same time. That's the beauty, one of the things that's nice about random flake patterning is you don't have to uh, follow a sequence uh, you could just uh, well how do I explain this uh, if you follow a sequence you're kind of constrained in where where you remove mass but if you do a random pattern you can do two things at once you can like I need to remove that step but I also need to flatten that area whereas if I was making a sequential pass and paying attention to the flake scar pattern I would still have to continue down this row and it might compound that step some flakes may dive when they hit that step uh, I could do a collateral flake pattern but then I would have to prepare this edge a little bit better it just takes more time with a uh, sequen sequential technique uh, random you can do a lot of different things uh, at the same time and it's a little bit quicker so again that's just my thought process as I'm doing this
it almost looks like a sequential technique too but as you can see it wasn't I didn't run a pass here and then run a pass here although it looks like it because the flake removals are generally from the tip to the base it almost looks like I went down this row or down this side first and then came over here and then ran flakes this way but in reviewing the video you can see that I took these flakes from all over but generally starting from the tip to the base I mean there's so many variables in flint napping that if you try to analyze what the napper actually did during the process uh, you'd be pulling your hair out most, most of the time or you could think that it's one strategy when it's actually another like this is a random flake pattern the technique is random though I mean uh, but the pattern looks like it I did a sequential technique and I didn't okay I'm trying to clear away that uh, diving flake it looks a little bit disappointing there. I might, it might run very deep. And uh, I'll focus on flaking techniques and, and the explanations of the techniques in other videos. I'll try to explain that a little bit better. You know, the difference between random and sequential flaking and the random and, sequ and sequential flake scar patterns. It's two different things there. Sometimes when I'm reproducing a certain point style and it's got a certain flake pattern, I'll cheat and I'll use random flaking uh, to imitate the pattern. Because for me, there's, you know, like I was saying earlier, there's more things you can do with a random technique. You can do a couple things at, at once. It saves you a little bit of time. But in the end, it looks like the pattern was carefully executed in a sequential way but it really wasn't okay I'll stop talking about that Looks like most of that uh, diving termination is removed now, which is a relief.
These flakes really want to dive. It's also really flat on this side, so that, that's another reason why flakes will peel off in a convex manner. So they want to, naturally they want to dive in anyway. Some materials will allow that flake uh, curvature more than others. Some materials allow you to run really flat flakes in a I wish I had more of that type of material, but it's uh, it's rare. trying to develop you know a very uh, very even convexity on both sides that way I don't have to do very much damage control toward the end of the point toward the end where I'm trying to uh, make sure the shape is right and everything else I don't have to worry about actually doing any damage control Okay, so it, the base is going to be a little slanted. I don't want to take any more off the length. I think that'll be good enough. So that's the preform right there. I'm going to, I think I'll divide this in two parts. Okay.